Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a weekend. Welcome back to a Saturday, May 4th, 2024, 11, 11 a.m. California time out here on a rainy morning here in Northern California. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.5 into the Alaska area. Looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity out here, we're going to start off on the big island of Hawaii where they're still seeing some earthquake activity not quite as much as yesterday, though, at least according to the USGS map here. Got about 13 earthquakes or so around the Kilauea volcano. The latest look here at the upper east rift zone, an area of interest and in where I believe we'll see future eruptive activity take place here from this ongoing elevated earthquake and inflation event. Looks clear for now. Not a whole lot of uh, visible uh, activity in terms of anything eruptive going on there across the surface area. Uh, so again, a little bit of earthquake activity out there. Let's go check out the latest update here. See if it's been put out from the USGS on Kilauea Volcano. Uh, this update was put out yesterday, so they have not put out an update yet. But I do want to double check the seismograph stations here and see what's going on here. The last 12 hours, that's a little on the slow side not for sure why everything looks looks good on my end might be the usgs side does show some earthquake activity but notice we're uh, a little bit less not quite as active as what we had seen yesterday so past 12 hours a few earthquakes here they do have the seismograph data coming in fairly amplified uh, potentially maybe looking for any signs of um, some deeper movement activity in terms of magma migration but uh, we're just seeing a handful of earthquakes out here on the last 12 hours here of that map we'll have to check back a little bit later in terms of an update from the usgs but looking at the earthquake activity looks a little bit quieter uh today deformation data uh fairly neutral here if you look at the last week here's our inflation events followed up by a couple days of deflation or stationary activity. Uh, it looks like that's where we're at right now. But more than likely, if history and this graph tells us and shows us, uh, we'll see another inflationary event higher than the previous one uh, that we've seen here over the last month. But technically, over the last few years, if you look at the GPS displacements here, uh, this is the past year, past five years right here. And there's been a, a handful of eruptions, right, at the Kilauea Volcano. We haven't seen one in a little while. We've seen a huge displacement here of magma from the summit region off to the southwest rift zone earlier back in December. But, uh, or uh, excuse me, back in February of this year, right there. Uh, but since then, we have come back up nicely. And uh, we're at an elevated, inflated summit and uh, just a matter of time here before things start uh, rocking and rolling out there around that volcano once again. All right. A little earthquake outside of Fresno down uh, across the eastern side of the San Joaquin Valley. 2.6 near Orange, uh, Orange Cove. 23 kilometers deep there. Also down across the Brawley Seismic Zone here. This is the extensional plate boundary of the San Andreas Fault. A handful of smaller quakes. Nothing big showing up there on the map. Uh, for now, let's check and see what we got for the last two point, uh, last 24, 2.5 and above. It pretty much removes all of the earthquakes, a handful of earthquakes out uh, in the Intermountain West region. That was a 3.9 north of the Great Salt Lake City area. Mostly smaller microquake activity elsewhere, uh, specifically here around the Los Angeles area near Corona, where there's been a you know a decent amount of swarming here. Let's see what we got for the last seven days of activity in this area. I uh, got about 38 earthquakes, including that uh, 4.1, if I remember right, right there. That kicked up there a couple days ago. There was some activity prior to that and activity following that 4.1. So, um, you know, it's hard to say if this is a foreshock activity or just a small sequence of earthquakes that happened down there periodically in the Southern California region that was just off the Elsinore Fault in Southern California. So we'll continue to watch things. Texas area still getting hit uh, with some 
Earthquakes out in the oil fields, same for the Oklahoma area. Did see another three-pointer out here outside of Dover, Oklahoma. Very shallow earthquake south of Enid, uh, just off of the 81. North of Kingfisher, it does look like that may be some oil fields out here. Let's see what we got. Uh, they're actually pretty easy to spot here on the map. They're most likely these little checkered boxes here with pumps on them and uh, holding tanks. This earthquake, though, looks like it occurred underneath this pond. Uh, that's a little interesting for sure. Either way, definitely seen some earthquake activity out here in Oklahoma recently. New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. There's that little earthquake outside of the uh, Great Lakes area. 2.0 from last night. Looking at the rest of the model here, Alaska still seeing quite a bit of activity up north, stretching way up here towards the Brooks Range. Noticing uh, some elevated activity out here recently. Uh, the rest of the Aleutian Trench pretty quiet. Not a whole lot here across the western Pacific for now. Uh, that includes the EMSC model. Just a very minimal movement here across the Indonesia Islands area. A uh, handful of fives and some fours. Older quake activity overnight in this region of the world. And down in New Zealand here looks like some further activity underneath North Island see what else we got south america middle america trench looks about the same as yesterday let's see what we got for the puerto rico area let's zoom in here from the usgs map and a handful of earthquakes mostly twos and threes overall the status here today doesn't look um super duper active just uh moderate quake activity in the typical zones did see a 5.8 out here into the Atlantic Ocean. I guess that's new from overnight, early this morning. Or no, take that back, late last night. 5.8 there north of the Ascension Island area. Aside from that, uh, let's go check out the Iceland activity. See if anything's stirring up out there. A uh, little bit elevated activity out here outside of the area of interest. Not for sure why this is so slow. Uh, Grindavik area getting some earthquake activity here within the town and just north here it does look like a broader region of earthquake activity there across our ongoing eruption right so let's go check out the live from Iceland site and get a, a little visual perspective of things out there today not for sure what's going on here everything looks good on my end could be the wet weather out here I don't know possibly is this one online Maybe that one's offline. So it still looks like one active crater out here. Nothing else going on here that I can see. A little bit of uh, smoke out there in the lava fields. As far as any update goes from the Icelandic Met Office, they put one out a couple days ago. Doesn't look like there's anything new out here today. They're just kind of discussing about the elevated inflation going on along with the uh, the ongoing eruption. Uh, there is a risk that the lava will cover defenses east of Grindavik if the force of the eruption increases again. So obviously we're getting elevated here. This is a vertical displacement. We're up there. We're definitely getting up there in terms of what we had seen in the last couple eruptions here before. Uh, before you know something happens at the surface as far as eruptive fissure activity so things are advancing pretty quickly here and if we do see some further elevated volume of magma to this area of the ongoing eruption we'll see like they mentioned here potentially some lava uh, occurring uh, deeper out here maybe even breaching this area of the protector a uh, protective barrier that is if the eruptive activity takes place here in this region, but it could take place anywhere. It could happen in Grindvik underneath it. It could happen over here to the west. It's just something that we got to watch pretty closely here. So we'll continue to report back on any changes that take place there across the area. Right now, it's a, it's a waiting game. Hoping for the best, though. All right, uh, Mag, we got uh, a fairly complex sunspot up here. I don't know what is going on with this. It seems like everywhere is slow out here today. Uh, there's that sunspot that produced an X flare a couple days ago. A near X flare last night, seen a decent M flare 
look at that. Very close to the Explorer category, but not quite. We're starting to peak back up there right now. This is the last three days of activity. There's our X flare that did have an, an eruptive component with it, did produce a CME and it is earth directed. We are forecasting here a G1 to a G2 class storm here over the next couple nights. So it looks like the earliest arrival is going to be the May 5th UTC time of 1824. And right now it's May 4th at 1815 UTC time. So roughly this time tomorrow uh, and tomorrow night, hopefully the time frame will match up here. We could get uh, a decent uh, glancing blow from that CME that was blasted off from that X flare days ago. So watch for that tomorrow night, tomorrow morning. Uh, excuse me, tomorrow night and then uh, Monday morning potentially that could come in to kick up the auroras there. Um, right now, not a whole lot going on there. We'll watch for that as things uh, get a little bit closer to tomorrow night. 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 75, X flare around 5, 25% uh, chance. And we are currently seeing some C flare activity right now. It looks like C through uh, C 4.2. Now the magnetic structures up here of these sunspots do show 3663 being quite complex. That's this region right here from last night. A more recent shot of it does show some complexity around the central core here. A little bit of spreading center here of the sunspot. Um, and that's normally a side of some weakening here in this area, but right now it still shows uh, fairly complex activity. And also further down south here, there's another sunspot that is showing some growth and complexity here within that main core. So we do have a couple sunspots. We gotta watch 3664 and 3663. All harbor some potential there, some stronger flaring. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, far as the Storm Prediction Center goes, severe weather. It's not letting up yet. Got uh, enhanced area down here across portions of western Texas with a 10% hatched area for strong tornadoes out there. So if you're out there around the... Uh, it says no major population center at risk, but there is people down there. So we have to consider that doesn't matter if there's one person or a million people. It's still important to uh, uh, provide safety and updates here in regards to the severe weather potential out there today. So if you're out there in the 10% region, it says no major population out there, but uh, it looks like it's just outside of the Fort Stockton area. Uh, San Angelo included in that uh, 5%, uh, but the 10% area definitely keep an eye on the sky here today. Could be some... Uh, twisters out there tomorrow sunday looks uh, a little bit less out here but same area generally with uh, a chance of some tornado activity in the two percent zone wind and some hail threats as well now monday could be a, a high end event here this is the monday forecast notice a huge hatched area in the typical tornado alley region we're going to have to check back on that tomorrow uh, but it does look like we have could have a wide area of tornado threats out here Similar to what we've seen last week. So just a heads up. We'll check back on that a little bit later. All right. Seismograph stations all look pretty quiet for now, folks. Hope everyone enjoys their day. We got uh, a little bit of rain out here coming in. Let me show you guys the uh, weather radar here from Windy. The Windy map. And uh, got a cold low pressure system here. Uh, dropped uh, almost half an inch here at my place just outside of Chico back behind this cold front We got some cold unstable air. It's coming in around afternoon time uh, We could get some breaks in the sunshine or breaks in the clouds creating some instability along with some thunderstorm activity out here So the Cape values don't look all that impressive But uh, once we get some sunshine mixing in with that cold unstable air aloft that is where the Cape values kick up. And it does look like it's right around my area here. So I will be watching the skies this afternoon for some thunderstorm activity. All right, folks, have a good day. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening. Enjoy your weekend.